Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our preview for The Blacklist Season 10, Episode 11, The Man in the Hat. It's finally going to be here. It's been so hyped, and we've yeah. been really excited about it, and it's finally going to be here. And after last week's episode, I'm even more excited about it. It's got to be better. I I would hope so. I, I'm also equally excited. It's not very often we get like this strange conceptual possibly yeah. title for an episode like this. This has been out there for a while. The show <laughs> itself is being reasonably cryptic when it comes to what lies ahead. Like, you know, we saw the promotional photos that they put out for mm -hmm. this. Squadoosh, that is how much of notable stuff is in any of those. They are hiding something. And I'm fine with that. I really like when the show holds a little bit back with these, like, possibly really big episodes or more sort of exploratory episodes where they just don't want to give away too much. I mean, we could be in for some really good surprises with this episode. I sure hope so. And we're going to break down everything, share some theories. But before we do dive in here any further, if you guys did not know, earlier this week, Jess and I launched a new Patreon with some really, really cool benefits attached to it because, you know, that sort of support helps us to keep going with this channel. It mm -hmm. keeps our lights on over yeah. here. And we wanted to offer something that would be fun to build a great Patreon community. So we have benefits over there, mm -hmm. including voting on polls. You can get your yeah. name at the end of a lot of these videos. You can also have access to some exclusive videos that you can't find anywhere else. And for everybody who loves the blacklist right now over there, there's a discussion that Jess and I had about yeah. who is number two on the blacklist, which is something that we have all speculated about for weeks and months on end. So we hope you go over there. The link is in the description. Mm -hmm. Check that out. I mean, we would be very, very grateful. We appreciate you guys watching and your support for so many years. Absolutely. Okay, before we get too far yeah. into the preview, let's talk schedule because yeah. there's been a lot of just pure speculation on everybody's part on is this going to be a split season? They're going to run into the summer. Nobody actually knew anything. And anybody who says that they did, yeah. they didn't. It's just the only people that know are NBC and they have not said anything. They haven't hinted that it was going to be split. They hadn't hinted that it was going to go on all the way. They've said squadooch. So here we are now where the futon critic, who's been around a very yeah. long time and has had a lot of really accurate information, has put up a schedule of what's coming up in the summer for like, you know, May, June, July. And surprise, surprise, Blacklist is on there. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> there's no split season seemingly coming up. And again, I want to remind everybody that NBC has said nothing. Nothing is confirmed. Yeah. However, it is very interesting that Futon Critic has put that up because they are pretty reliable. Yeah. I am moving forward in my brain with the assumption, and I could be wrong. You could take a massive L. Like you said, NBC not confirmed anything, but... I'm moving forward right now with the thinking that, okay, you know what? We're just going to see the rest of this show play out over the course of the summer. Like, yeah. you know, the, the ratings, to be frank, they're just not great enough for NBC <laughs> to hold on to this show for a long period of time. And I think having it over the summer, we all we all need things to watch over the summer. Like, let's be real here. There's a lot, a lot of network TV on, especially. So mm -hmm. why not keep things going? Plus, if they were going to do like a mid-season finale or something else, it felt like the Troll Farmer Part 3 was really the time to do that. Like, that really felt like the end of something. <laughs> Yeah, so. it did. It actually felt like the end of the show. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it just, it doesn't feel like it was coming to a split season. I know a lot of people were really feeling like, oh, you know, if the writer's strike happens, then, you know, they're going to want to save something for the fall. But I mean, they've known, networks have known, streaming services have known that this is a possibility that was going to be coming up for months. Yeah. So that no one's going to be sitting around with so many jobs and so much money on the line to be like, ah, oh, we'll just, we'll just wait and see how it plays out. We'll make a decision last minute. Nah, yeah. they're there making other decisions and making sure that other stuff is ready to rock and roll. Okay. Well, let's. 
let's get now into the present and the man in the hat. Like, we'll have some stuff to talk about when it comes to Reddington's identity, everybody's favorite question. I know. <laughs> there's a little... a little bit of talk about that. Yeah, we, we'll get into that. But the man in the hat itself, like, this is the premise as sort of outlined in the synopsis that Reddington is being identified as somebody who is being held amongst this, like, incident that is going on in Philadelphia. And yep. it's just, like... The biggest question that I sort of have with that, just to be very frank with it, is like, whoever would hold Reddington in a way that he would not be able to escape? Like, how would he willingly be like, okay, I'll just sit back and let, you know, my life, the lives of these other people who are trapped in this deli with me to just to let it be at the mercy of somebody else who is like holding them up. It's just like there's something that smells weird about that and i'm not just talking about possibly expired deli meat there's like another bad smell going on it's not reddington <laughs> so oh boy i've had my theory that the person that aram saw at the beginning of the season where he was like hey mr reddington mr reddington and you know that guy looked at aram like who are you yeah. like, i don't i don't know you it's that guy that's yeah. going to be the person who's the person who is identified as possibly Raymond Reddington. I think that's who it's going to be. And that that's finally going to come into play of who is this person? Why do they look like yeah. Raymond? What are they doing? All of that. I think that's where it's going to finally play out because we're going to have Dembe and wrestler take action and get down there. And Dembe is probably going to look at this person and be like, and who are you? <laughs> They're the man in the hat. That's who the title person is. Like that's, this is at least what I think would be the most fun. That's way. my tinfoil yeah. hat theory. I think it's not actually him. I think it's that person we saw at the beginning. I think this is th this is the most fun explanation by far for what this episode could end up being about. Because if, you know, this man in the hat is not Reddington, like you're saying, then it sort of brings into this question of, okay, why are they looking like him? Why are they pretending mm -hmm. to be him? What mm -hmm. is the end game? For this, and then I think beyond all that, like, I would refuse to believe that Reddington would just not know that this person is out there doing all this, or at least having the potential for all of this. And it would at least explain something we talked a little bit about in the review mm -hmm. for this past episode, which is why is Reddington even still working with the task force at this point? Because the blacklist theoretically will never be complete and we know that he has a selfish motive for all of this he's not just like altruistic trying to save the world it's like he he needs the task force or something right and as we said in our review he's erased himself from the task force so how does he get to continue working with the task force everybody has to answer to somebody yeah and i mean pan baker's gonna be in this episode i'm sure she's gonna be looking for answers harold's gonna have to answer for everything that happened the the bodies in the post office that the post offices have been exposed to a whole bunch of other criminals reddington doesn't exist anymore so if he doesn't exist anymore the task force doesn't exist anymore it's the fbi is not going to keep doing this on the sly for very long i I think they set up that it's going to be dismantled. And I mean, it kind of has to be. I mean, we're we're getting to the end of the series. They can't keep going on if Reddington's not part of it. Oh, I'll hold on here. Uh, oh, John Eisendrath. Oh, he's he's coming through th through my earpiece. I've got a, I've got a uh, spoiler for the script for this here? episode. <laughs> Panabaker's going to walk in. Cooper, I'm hotter than a hog on a July afternoon. What are you doing with this task force? Thank you. Thank you. That is it's your cheese sliding off your cracker. <laughs> Panda Baker, like, dear to love Joyce, he's like a very nice person in real life. But I think it's awesome. I think at some point before the end of this series, she's just going to like find her way into one of these videos and just like <laughs> smack me across the face for this terrible impression I keep doing. She never would. She's so lovely. She is, she's, she's too nice for what I think her anger <laughs> level should be at me for this terrible. Okay. Uh, moving on from that, so we don't talk about that anymore. Uh, Sia is going to dig deeper into her mother's past, which it just sort of raises the question to me. It's like, okay, I, I understand why Sia is doing this. I understand what she wants to get out of it. But it's just sort of like, where is all of this going to go eventually? Because it's just like, in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to shocking the blacklist deaths and like mysteries and all that, what happened to Mira is pretty straightforward, honestly. Yeah, it was. 
was. She yeah. was like part of everything that was going on where they were like, you know, in there trying to grab some bad guys and she got killed by some stooge. Like yeah. it was just it was just an accident that happened. Like there there isn't anything deeper. Yeah. That's why it's kind of surprising. She must be looking into something else that has to do with this. Like it just can't be how did she die? Well, you know, it's not yeah. that complicated. Yeah, I just that that that's once again not a very fun outcome if that is just sort of exactly where we're going and there's not another twist. But speaking of twists, now things get juicy now. Oh, here we, we go. Let's prepare to get on both hard hats, suits of armor, hazmat suits, hard everything, hats. everything for the comments. Okay, hold Okay, so on. one of our commenters here yeah. let us know that they were talking over on Instagram yeah. and that they had asked a question to Christine yeah. Gee. And I'm sorry if I'm butchering your last name, Christine. I am so sorry. Please forgive me. Yeah. Uh, asking if we are going to really learn Reddington's true identity. And this is what she had to say. <laughs> If you've been paying close attention to the things Red says, then you already know. But there will be an exchange in the final episode that will say it indirectly. Woo! Oh boy, Woo! John Eisendrath, man, you took an L because yeah. he came out earlier a few months ago and basically said, if you don't know clearly who Raymond is by the end of this, and then I've been overruled by other people on production. And I think he came out and said that because he already knew he was overruled and he is the showrunner. So if it's not clear who's going to be the person that's going to like be burnt to the ground, it's him. So <laughs> I think he came out to basically be like, I already know you're not going to get the answers that you want. It's not going to be clear. And that's too bad. I mean, for me, I don't, I, I don't care who it is. Like, I don't. It can be the real Raymond Reddington. It can be Katerina. It could be the brother. It could be a twin. It could be an alien from <laughs> Neptune. I don't care who it is at this point. I just want an answer, and I want the show to stand on it. I want, I want an answer, but I also just wanted, like, an episode or two to really explain the full journey of how this person became Reddington, why they did it, what they were sort of going on. And I know that we could... Use our imagination. Imagination is wonderful. Yeah. No, sure. don't don't but, blind spot this situation. Give us an ending that's up to interpretation. Yeah. Like I would rather just have something a little bit definitive. And you know, the idea that an exchange in the final episode will say it indirectly, like maybe that is maybe that does end up being explicit enough that we're just sitting Hope back so. and it's just like, okay, it's this person, but you can also make an ex you could also explain a couple of other things as being indirect proof over the years. You can say Reddington being like, I am who I am, Popeye the Sailor Man, and be like, okay, boom, that's what Christine is talking about here. It's the real Reddington. You could look at like Nichalo and all the flashbacks there and be like, okay, boom, that's what she's talking about. This is this is Katarina. It's just like you can already come up with any explanation you want for this. I just want to say a special thank you to the person who left that comment for us because we wouldn't have seen that if it wasn't yeah. for you. And we really appreciate that you brought this to our attention because it's Oh, it was really shocking that you got an answer yeah. at all. I was just like, oh, whoa. Yeah. And she actually responded to that yeah. and she gave a pretty solid answer. So good for you for getting yeah. that answer. Yeah, we have something. We actually have something specific to look forward to now at the end of this show, yeah. which honestly, otherwise, who knows what we would have had because they're not even, they're not saying anything I about know. what this second arc is going to look like. But rest assured, we will be back to calm our way through the man in the hat once this episode airs. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Once again, thank you to everyone who is supporting us over on our Patreon. Yes. We do have that video about number two on the blacklist there. Yes. And we'll see you here next time.